Hello and welcome. Dear students, today we will learn about structure and function of ecosystem. Before going to structure and function, we will learn about ecosystem. The term ecosystem was proposed by British ecologist A. G. Tansley in 1935. Tansley considered ecosystem as a basic functional unit of ecology, which includes both biotic community, mutually related with their non-living and biotic environment. Therefore, according to Tansley, ecosystem consists of biotic community and abiotic environment, that is, living organisms and non-living environment which are interrelated and interact upon each other. Thus, any unit in which all organisms, that is, communities in a given area, interact with physical environment so that the flow of energy leads to clearly defined tropic structure, biotic diversity and material cycling within the system is known as ecological system or ecosystem. Ecosystem varies greatly in size from a small pond to a large forest or a sea. Ecosystem is important for all living beings as well as non-living beings. There are so many importances of ecosystem. Few of them are ecosystem study gives us information about the amount of available solar energy in an area. It gives data about the availability of mineral elements, their utilization and recycling in the environment. Eco an ecosystem determines interrelationships between various types of organisms as well as between organisms and abiotic environment. The maximum number of producers and consumers of various categories which can be supported in ecosystem is known. Now, kinds of ecosystem. Ecosystem are classified on the basis of habitat. There are two major kinds of ecosystems. Number one, natural ecosystem and number second, man-made or artificial ecosystem. Natural ecosystem is an ecosystem which operates themselves under natural conditions without any major interference by man. Natural ecosystem further divided into two different ecosystems such as aquatic ecosystem and terrestrial ecosystem. Aquatic ecosystem further subdivided into two types, fresh water and marine water. Fresh water ecosystems has again two subdivisions. Number one, lentic waters, that is standing waters, for example, lakes, ponds, etc. And lotic moving waters, for example, streams. Similarly, marine waters are again divided into oceans, estuaries, etc. Now, terrestrial ecosystem. Terrestrial ecosystem also categorized into grassland, desert, and forest ecosystems. Now, artificial ecosystems. Artificial ecosystems are maintained artificially by man, whereby addition of energy and planned manipulations Natural balance is disturbed regularly. For example, croplands like wheat, maize, and rice fields are artificial ecosystems. Now, dear students, we will see the structure of ecosystem. By structure, we mean the composition of biological community, including species, number, biomass, life history, and distribution in space, etc. The quantity and distribution of non-living materials such as nutrients, water, etc. And the range or gradient 
of conditions of existence such as temperature, light, etc. The structure of ecosystem is in fact a description of the species of organisms that are present, including information on their life histories, population, and distribution in space. From structural point of view, all ecosystems consist of following two basic components. Number one, biotic or living components. Number second, abiotic or non-living components. Now, biotic components of ecosystem are of three kinds. Number one, producers. These are autotrophs or chemoautotrophs. Second, consumers. Consumers are primary, secondary, and tertiary consumers. And decomposers are, we can say them, microorganisms. Producers are autotrophers. Those organisms which prepare their own food by using solar energy, chlorophyll, inorganic nutrients, and water. This process is known as photosynthesis. For example, plants, some photosynthetic bacteria, algae, these are called producers of an ecosystem. Second is consumers. Consumers are those animals which obtain their food from producers. These are primary consumers, secondary consumers, and tertiary consumers. Herbivores. Herbivores are the category of organisms which feed on plants, also called primary consumers. For example, cow, goat, rabbit, etc. These organisms mainly dependent on herbs, plants, grasses, etc. So are called herbivores. Carnivores. Carnivores are meat eaters. These are those organisms which eat meat and dependent on herbivores. These are carnivores are known as secondary consumers, such as loin, focus, etc. And there is one another category that is omnivores. Omnivores are also called general feeders, those organisms which feed on both plants and animals, for example, man. And finally, decomposers. Decomposers are tiny organisms, include bacteria and fungi, which in turn organic compounds of dead plants and animals into inorganic materials. Decomposers cause the continual recirculation of chemicals within an ecosystem that is called nutrient cycling. Now we will talk about abiotic components of ecosystem. Likewise, biotic components, the abiotic components of ecosystem are again consist of inorganic substances, organic compounds, and climatic factors. Inorganic components. The inorganic components of an ecosystem are carbon dioxide, water, nitrogen, calcium, and phosphate. All of these are involved in metal cycling, that is biogeochemical cycles. Second is organic components. The organic components of an ecosystem are proteins, carbohydrates, lipids, and amino acids. All of these are synthesized by the biota, that is flora and fauna of an ecosystem and are reached to ecosystem as their wastes, dead remains, etc. The climatic factors include temperature, light, soil, etc. are the other abiotic components of ecosystem. Now we will talk about the functioning of an ecosystem. By function, we mean the rate of biological energy flow, that is, the production and respiration rates of a community. Biological and ecological regulation, including both regulation of organisms by environment, that is called photoperiodism, etc., and regulation of environment by organism, 
that is nitrogen fixing organisms, etc. Functioning of ecosystem is subdivided into productivity of ecosystem, energy flow in ecosystem, and cycling of matter. First of all, we will talk about productivity of ecosystem. The productivity of ecosystem refers to the rate of production, that is, the amount of organic matter which is accumulated in any unit time. Productivity of ecosystem is of three types. Number one, primary productivity. Number second, secondary productivity. And number third, net productivity. Primary productivity is associated with the producers which are autotrophic. Which we can define primary productivity as the rate at which radiant energy is stored by photosynthetic and chemosynthetic activity of producers. Primary productivity is further distinguished as gross primary productivity and net primary productivity. Gross primary productivity or GPP is the rate of storage of organic matter in plant tissue in excess of respiratory utilization by plants during the measurement period. Net primary productivity refers to balance between grass photosynthesis and respiration and other plant losses as death, etc. Now, secondary productivity. These are the rates of energy storage at consumer level. Since consumers only utilize food materials already prepared by producers in their respiration, simply covering the food matters to different tissues by an overall process. The secondary productivity is not divided into gross and net amounts. Net productivity. Net productivity refers to the rate of storage of organic matter not used by the heterotrophs, that is consumers. That is equivalent to the net primary production minus consumption by the heterotrophs during the unit period. It is thus the rate of increase of biomass of primary producers which has been left over by the consumers. The second thing in functioning of ecosystem is energy flow. The sun is the only source of energy for all ecosystems on earth. Of the incident solar radiation, less than 50% of it is photosynthetically active radiation. Only 2 to 10 percent of photosynthetically active radiations is captured by plants. To make food from simple inorganic materials and this small amount of energy sustains the entire living world. Only a small fraction of this stored as organic compounds is transferred to consumers. The rest is used up in respiration and other life supporting activities of plants, for example, metabolism, etc., etc. As energy is transferred as a food, most part of it is lost as heat at, at each stage of trophic level. There is only 10% of energy which is transferred at successive trophic levels, and this is called 10% law. How energy flows in an ecosystem? Plants are producers because they produce carbohydrates from carbon dioxide, water, and sun's energy by the process of photosynthesis. Carbohydrates are the nutrients which become available for second trophic level, that is consumers. These consumers get their energy by feeding on producers or other consumers. Decomposition is the process of breakdown of wastes and dead remains by small organisms like bacteria, fungi, etc. called decomposers through the process of 
biodegradation. And final setup in the functioning of energy flow is biogeochemical cycling. Biogeochemical cycling is the cycling movement of materials from their reservoirs, for example, air, water, and soil, to the living components and back to reservoirs is called nutrient cycling of biogeochemical cycles. Dear students, today we have learned about ecosystem, its kind, its structure and function. We will summarize ecosystem are classified on to barely two types, natural, for example, lakes, rivers, forests. These are under the influence of nature. There is no any man's disturbance. And the second ecosystem which we call artificial ecosystem. In this category, croplands like wheat, maize and rice fields occur. And then we are knowing about structure. By structure, there are two components of ecosystem, broadly biotic or living or and second abiotic, non-living components. From biotic components include producers, consumers and decomposers. In producers, these are those organisms which are able to prepare their own food by the process of photosynthesis. And this food become available to the other trophic levels of ecosystem for herbivores, carnivores and tertiary carnivores by eating and being eating. This process is known as food chain. When this food chain becomes interlocking system, that is called food web. These biotic and abiotic components interact each other and are dependent upon each other, which makes a complex system that is called ecosystem. In this ecosystem, different kinds of organisms belong to different categories like producers, primary consumers, secondary consumers and tertiary consumers. These are ultimately dependent upon the producers and producer is dependent upon the sunlight, which is the main source of energy. The function of ecosystem belongs to fun uh, energy flow, productivity and biogeochemical cycles. First of all, the productivity. There are three types of productivities, primary productivity, secondary productivity and net productivity. Primary productivity is associated with uh, producers. Uh, and secondary productivity is associated with uh, consumers. Net productivity is associated with primary production minus consumption by the heterotrophs during the unit period or in a community. Then energy flow. Energy in energy flow, there is the only one source for all ecosystems on the earth, that is sun. From sun, there are so many radiations are coming to, from sun to the earth. And among them, photosynthetically, 50% of it is photosynthetically active. From this photosynthetically active radiation, 2 to 10% is captured by plants to make food for other organisms and their self. This food is not wholly and solely utilized by plants. They use it in their metabolic activities and other processes and some energy which is created in them is lost as heat. Only 10% of energy is transferred to other trophic levels from producers to consumers to tertiary consumers on the top of trophic level. And finally, these organisms are decayed and again back there is occurring biogeochemical cycles. This is the cyclic movement of minerals of an ecosystem. The cycling movement of minerals from their reservoirs, air, water and soil to living components of ecosystem and back to their reservoirs. This cyclic movement is called nutrient cycling and biogeochemical cycles. Thank you for your guidance.